Is it better to live in Vernon or is it better to live in the cusp? Is it better to live on Okanagan Lake or is it better to live on the Upper Arrow Lake? We're going to discuss that today and we're starting now. I'm Lisa Salt with Remax Vernon Salt Fowler and sometimes buyers want to know where is better to move to, Vernon or Nacusp? Today we're going to look at the pros and cons of each of these places. But before we do, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel and like this video as we're posting new videos like this every single week. On this channel we give you the straight goods on Vernon and the Okanagan and apparently the Kootenays, our ultimate Four Seasons Paradise. Whether you're moving in 9 days or 90 days or just curious about the area that we call home, be sure to call, text or email and just add salt. At the end of this video, I will tell you how to download our free Vernon relocation package so that you can make a decision all on your own as to where you'd like to move, so stick around. So the answer to where is better to live, Vernon or Nacusp, it really, once again, depends on what you want and on where you stand on these eight factors. First one we're going to look at is size. Maybe you've been to both Vernon and the Cusp, or maybe you haven't. It doesn't take much to figure out that Vernon is way larger. I mean, it's no Vancouver or Toronto. However, if you say Vernon is to Vancouver, like the Cusp is to Vernon, size-wise, it might make some sense. Now, is bigger necessarily better? Maybe, maybe not. It all depends on what you're looking for. In 2022, the population of Vernon itself was 44,519, which doesn't actually include Coldstream, which is its own municipality. Coldstream is still part of Greater Vernon, and that's another 11,171 people. Let's say in total, 55,500 in Greater Vernon. And the cusp is way smaller at 1,706 people. So Greater Vernon is, it's only about 32 and a half times the population size. The cusp actually isn't a city, it's a village. And its settlement history started in 1892 when it became part of the fur trade route. Interestingly enough, because there were no roads or railways to the cusp in the early days, goods were shipped in and out of town by paddle wheelers on the Arrow Lakes, which were on the shipping route from Castlegar all the way to Revelstoke. And so Nacusp has an extensive paddle wheel history, same as the steamships that traveled from Okanagan Landing from 1907 to 1935, transporting mail, food, supplies, and people up and down the Okanagan Lake. So that's kind of interesting, something that they both have in common. I guess many of these settlements that were on the lake would have a similar type of history. Nacusp was incorporated into a village in 1964, so really not all that long ago, and Vernon into a city in 1892. Anyway, that's your history lesson for the day. Being much smaller than Vernon, that brings us once again to analyzing factor number two, which is the amenities. What are you giving up by living in a smaller center? Now, Nacusp obviously has way, way, way less stuff to do and places to shop. Really, if you need the more major amenities of a city, then there's no competition. However, Nacusp is just so quaint. It's a nice little village that you can maybe forgive the lack of amenities if you don't need the hospital, the airport, etc. The basics are here, grocery stores, there's a save on foods, homegrown market, home hardware, Jennifer's chocolates, that's important, pharmacy, the obligatory cannabis store, of course, and then a bunch of other little boutique type shops. Now you're a long way to an international airport. However, in the cusp, there is a 909 meter long airstrip north of town. It's a registered aerodrome, which means it's an airstrip and not really much else. Versus the Vernon Airport, I mean, Vernon also has an airport. It's a regional airport with 1,072 meters of asphalt runway. Neither one of them are gonna get you very far. The Vernon Airport is more developed, of course. It's fully serviced with airside lots on five acres of property and we even have jets in and out and everything. Saying that closest international airport to both places is Kelowna International, which from downtown Vernon is 29 minutes versus three hours and 11 minutes from the cusp, depending on whether you catch the first ferry or not. Now from the cusp, you can also go to Castlegar to the West Kootenay Regional Airport, and then you could make a connection from there if you needed to go internationally. And that's only one hour and 47 minutes. 
Hospital-wise, there's the Arrow Lakes Hospital in the Cusp, which is a level one community hospital, which provides basic services to the local community versus Vernon Jubilee, which is a full-scale, full-service hospital. Although admittedly, for any major illnesses or surgeries in both cases, you will still need to be heading to a larger hospital for sure, whether that's Kelowna or Vancouver or wherever. The main amenities in the cusp though are the hot springs. And that's where this area really shines. And it certainly outshines the Okanagan as there are no hot springs in Vernon, yet there are three in the cusp. The Nacusp hot springs, Halfway River hot springs, and Halcyon hot springs. The Halfway River hot springs are the least developed and really rustic of the hot springs. Then the Cusp hot springs are owned actually by the Nacusp village with two pools fed by mineral springs in the forest. They have a hot pool and a warm pool and there's a campground, RV sites and cedar chalets there as well. Then third is my personal favorite, Halcyon Hot Springs. I love Halcyon. It's the most developed and really it's a resort with a full service restaurant featuring high end, fancy, delicious food. These rustic yet really beautiful cabins and chalets, many with incredible lake views. A trail by the lake with nice little lookout sitting areas. Plus you can paddle board if you're so inclined. The lake is so beautifully calm, many times with no boats, so it's hardly any boats anyway, so it's a great place to paddleboard. There's a playground and of course the spa. At Halcyon there's four pools ranging from freezing to really hot and all with views of the lake. It's a super stunning, beautiful setting. Vernon knows hot springs, however many other activities available in Vernon typical to a larger center. There's more and bigger parties, like our annual slow pitch baseball tournament. Fantastic. It's also a music festival on the July long weekend. There's our winter carnival to make winter a little bit more palatable. Plus, Vernon has kind of a more thriving arts and cultural community, as well as, you know, a spa splash of red event and other major events like that. And being so close to Silver Star, that's one of Vernon's huge claims to fame. It's super convenient for sure. Nacusp actually also has a ski hill, however, it's a much smaller scale. It's called Summit Lake Ski and Snowboard Area. It's a small community operated ski hill, 16 kilometers east of Nacusp. It has eight runs with a T-bar and a rope tow. So it's like skiing in the 70s. However, it is much more affordable than the bigger mountains like Silver Star, that's for sure. So number three, let's look at the industry. If you need a J-O-B, it may not be a super easy job to find one in Vernon at the best of times. However, it's going to be even more difficult to find one in the cusp. The major industries in the cusp used to be mining. However, right now it's pretty much only forestry and tourism. Interfor is active still with mills around the area, plus the hot springs. They're big business as well. Yet I doubt the jobs offered are top tier pay. In Vernon, the major industries are tourism, the professional service sector, agriculture, construction, some manufacturing, and forest products. And although Vernon doesn't have a lot of, you know, quote unquote industry, there's definitely more than the cusp. So if you need or want to work, you will probably have a much easier time finding work in Vernon. Number four, let's look at the water. This one is an interesting one. Nacusp is on the upper Arrow Lake and the Arrow Lakes actually, now the lakes are combined. There's upper and lower Arrow Lakes. So it's actually a larger body of water than Okanagan Lake. So upper and lower Arrow Lake, they're actually widenings of the Columbia River. And it's kind of interesting because originally the two lakes were 14 miles apart but then they became one 230 kilometer long lake due to the reservoir created by the 1960s construction of the Keenly Side Dam. And I guess in low water, the lakes are still separated, but in high water, they're just one big lake. Now to get across the lake, you have to take a ferry. There's three ferry crossings. So that's a bit of a drag if you're in a hurry, definitely. The water temperature in the Arrow Lake is described as cool and refreshing by one person online and cold as the grave by another. <laughs> I couldn't find anything regarding the temperature of the lake. I think it's cold though. Beautiful, but cold. Okanagan Lake I'm sure is warmer. Now the other thing is Nacusp is right on the water, whereas Vernon, downtown is eight minutes away from the lake. 
One thing is you don't see a lot of boats, like power boats, on the Arrow Lakes, or at least the upper Arrow Lakes, and I thought that that was kind of strange, but I guess it isn't because when they flooded that whole area, they flooded a lot of trees and houses and things like that. A lot of people were relocated. So all that stuff is still under the water. So you'll be powering along in your powerboat or your sea dew and pop up in front of you, all of a sudden there's a tree. So it seems like it's more for fishing, paddle boarding, rowboating, etc. So when they're combined, the Arrow Lakes run all the way from Revelstoke to Castlegar between the Selkirk Mountains to the east and the Monashee Mountains to the west. Comparatively speaking, Arrow Lakes are long, skinny arrows. Whereas Okanagan Lake, the main competitor from Vernon, is extremely large with broad sweeping vistas and certainly warmer temperatures like we talked about before. Comparing the two, Okanagan Lake is 135 kilometers versus 230 for both the upper and lower Arrow Lakes. And also saying that Vernon has three lakes, Okanagan, Kalamalka, and Swan. All the lakes are close in from downtown Vernon. It's literally eight minutes to every one of those three lakes. They're all beautiful in their own right. Okanagan being 135 kilometers long and 351 square kilometers and spanning from Vernon all the way to Penticton. And as mentioned already, was once the main traffic source taking mail and passengers up the lake to Kelowna and Penticton on the steamships. Next is Kalamalka, a smaller lake in Coldstream, which back in the 60s, National Geographic stated Kalamalka was in the top 10 of the most beautiful lakes in the world. Kalamalka means lake of many colors and is just an outstanding lake in the summer. It's so incredibly beautiful. It's a moral lake. And then third, we have Swan Lake, which is a stagnant lake that is smaller and more of a nature reserve area and still very beautiful in its own right. Number five, let's look at accessibility. One of the criteria we haven't used in our other is it better to live in videos is how easy it is to get there. Because most of the places we have examined are pretty easy to get to from here, wherever here is. The cusp, on the other hand, it's not that easy, which I'm sure is one of the reasons it's not that developed and still has only 1,706 people after existing for so many years. Regardless of which direction you come from, whether it's from the Vernon Lumbee end or whether it's from the Revelstoke end, you have to take a charming little ferry. I mean, I imagine it's charming once in a while. I'm not sure how many times you have to actually cross the lake with a ferry before it becomes less attractive, but there's the Needles Cable Ferry on Highway 6, and if you're coming from Revelstoke on Highway 23, you take the Shelter Bay Ferry. On the bright side, they're both free. If you miss one though and have to wait for the next one or the next one, it's kind of annoying. The Needles Ferry is pretty quick, but then the Shelter Bay, you have to wait an hour. There are two great things about this though. If the village doesn't grow that much, then you don't have to worry about things like traffic lights and gridlock and you know all those things that come with a bigger city. I suspect most people move out to Nacusp to get away from it all and you're in fact literally doing that. It's remote and it's tough to get to. Vernon of course is easy. You just drive past the welcome to Vernon sign and you're here. Ta-da! Number six, let's look at the climate. In this case to examine the differences in the climate let's start by looking at elevation. The elevation of Vernon is 380 meters versus 457 meters in the cusp. So there's a difference in elevation for sure and that's going to affect the climate. You're going to find you have more precipitation in the cusp than Vernon for sure. I found some great comparison graphs actually as you can see here. Vernon is in the blue, the cusp is the green line. Most of the year Vernon is a few degrees warmer and the cusp is a few degrees cooler. Except in the months of December, January and February. Vernon actually seems to be a slight bit colder on average, which I admit I did not expect. As you can see though on this map here, Vernon is warmer longer than the cusp, which is to be expected in the sunny Okanagan. In Vernon, there's a better chance of clear skies all year long. Average monthly rainfall is way less in Vernon. Rainfall in Vernon is actually 333 millimeters versus 649.9 millimeters in the cusp, so almost double the rain. And then snowfall, as to be expected, 93.3 centimeters in Vernon to 192.1 centimeter total snowfall in the cusp. Again, almost double. 
Monthly Sunshine, something I personally am more interested in, Vernon 2026, and Nikos 1902. And unfortunately, I don't have a fancy graph for that one. You'll just have to take my word for it. Let's have a look at the housing market. Average house price in Nikos is $642,000 as of August, September 2022, and Vernon is $739,000 for single family homes. So Nikos's homes are less expensive for sure, especially for houses on the lake. I unfortunately can't tell you how much that difference is because I couldn't find any comparisons online. However, I'm sure we can all guess it would be quite a bit. Nikosp is always going to win the house pricing race for dollars, even if it's not for selection and the variety of homes on the market. Nikosp has some nice homes though, for sure. They're more quaint, a lot of older homes, very nice. Now number eight, let's look at fun stuff to do. As I said before, the hot springs in the cusp are the number one draw. However, being in a more rural area, it does enjoy many of the same activities that Vernon offers. There's lots of hiking and biking and snowmobile and boating, obviously paddle boarding, etc. Both locations have their farmer's markets. Vernon has the Monday and Thursday markets at Caltire Place, plus the Friday Polson Night Market. That's a huge drawing card for the growers of the area and artisans. And then in the cusp, you have the Saturday market. It's also a great place to pick up your produce, purchase some locally made goods. And in both locations, you'll get street entertainment in the market. Although Vernon doesn't have hot springs, we do have a bunch of other cool stuff that you can see by watching our video, nine fun and touristy things to do in Vernon, BC. The link is there. And those are the major differences between Vernon and the cusp. They're both very different and located a little over three hours apart. Both are very nice in their own ways and very different in so many ways. So now it's over to you to decide which area you like better. For more information on Vernon specifically, please download our Vernon Relocation Guide. It's free at vernonrelocation.com. The link is below.